As promised, there's the next prison fight story, Warrior vs Big E. If you want to know more about Warrior, see my previous video, Who is Warrior? So, in summary, he's serving 14 years, kidnapping aggravated assault. Half Hispanic, Scottish Irish, with family still in Mexico, brought up in a family involved in drug trafficking. Right. This is Warrior's words now. It's a long prison fight story. Guys in prison always feel they'll eventually be able to lay their swords down, hang up their spurs, and not have to maintain the status quo when it comes to respect. For some, their looks, size, reputation sometimes enables them to do so. Well, fortunately for me, I've had no such luck. It's always been my looks that made me stand out to be tested. Even as a kid in school, I remember it being the same way. I've heard I look like a pushover. I've also heard the term innocent. I never cease hearing, you don't look like you belong in prison. Even from the guards, whatever that means. I know this is the reason Big E chose me as an outlet for his aggression. Big E stood for Big Ego, a Mexican cat about 6 foot 1, 200 pounds. He had been around the system for a while, earned his ink putting in work for the MA, Mexican Mafia, covered in prison ink from neck to toe, Aztec warriors, brown pride, gang shield, traditional stuff, old English on his back and stomach. He wore a pair of Mad Dogger's sunglasses that added to his disposition. I had just touched down in Buckeye Prison, knew a couple of faces, met some new ones. One face I knew was a guy named Trip. Him and I did whole time together. Whole time means time in lockdown, punishment block. It's always good to run into a familiar face you're cool with from another unit. It helps your credibility as a solid dude when another solid dude can vouch for you. Plus, it helps you get a lay of the land quicker. Who's cool? Who's a dope fiend? Who's trouble? Which cops are assholes, And which are cool and let us do our time? My first day at Wreck, Trip and I walked a few laps. Damn, it's good to see you, dog. Trip said. Fuck, I know. I didn't think I was ever going to get out of the fucking hole, I said. It's good to see a familiar face. I hear you bro, who's still left over there? Eagle, Monster, Spider are all stuck in the hole. Roy made it to the yard though, he was happy. He's over here around the way on level 3 yard. Fucking Roy, that's cool, Trip said. The other cat's stuck, huh? Tss. That's the name of the game though, right? Cops and robbers. How long are you doing the hole, man? Three fucking years, homie. I said, I tell you man, that last year was worrying on me mentally, sensory deprivation shit ain't no joke. A lot of hate was building up in me, I don't know how those other dudes go 10 years like that in the hole. Those other dudes probably mad with hate by 5 years whole time, Trip said. By then those fools can only function in the hole, complete antisocial psychopaths. The really fucked up shit is the system has no idea of the monsters they're creating. As long as their pockets are full, all we are is dollar signs. I hear ya. Fuck the system. It's catch 22 one way or the other. Karma doesn't discriminate, it goes after systems too. Word has it a couple of dudes off themselves, Trip said. Yeah, four dudes in a month and a half in the hole. Two hung themselves by sheet. Two others cut their wrists. It was crazy. A youngster too, you should have seen it. Admin had the cops doing 15 minute walks to make it look good when the investigators came. But the minute the investigation was over, it was back to before. Damn, that's dirty. That's prison life though. Trip and I finished catching up. He then int introduced me to a group of dudes playing cards at the independent table. A table where all the races go to play poker. Guys gamble money, drugs, property, and even the homosexuals. 
All the races had claim to one of three tables, blacks, whites, Mexicans, but the fourth was a neutral spot for all the races agreed to and only meant for gambling, the independent table. Gambling is big business. Even in prison, green is acknowledged as the ultimate colour, colour of money, a source of income for those holding the keys, the heads of the racial gangs running the yard. At the independent table, all the guys had their shirts off as they took in the evening sun. By all the ink they displayed, you could tell they were old numbers. Old numbers means when you get arrested, you get a prison number. So mine was like one, eight, seven, blah, blah, blah. So I was the 187th thousand person to be arrested in Arizona. So if a dude's got a number like 0, 0, 0, 0, 10, he's like the 10th person. That's a way, that would be a way old number. He was the 10th person to get arrested in Arizona in that system that they have. Right. Sleeved with swastikas and Vikings if they were white. Aztec warriors and women if they were Mexicans. The blacks had images of Africa and civil rights leaders. Trip introduced me to everyone. Big E was there. Everyone was cool and shook my hand except for Big E. He looked me up and down, sizing me up. Everyone acted like they didn't notice, but they did. I exchanged small talk with a few guys and we were on our way. Hey, who's that fool with the mad dogger's glasses? Oh, that's Big E, Trip said. He thinks his shit doesn't stink. I noticed him sizing you up. You caught that too, huh? I can't stand motherfuckers like that. Well, you don't look like a tough guy. That face, man, Trip said. What I lack in looks, I make up an experience. Believe that, I said, growing irritable. Hey, whoa, whoa, I'm not the one sizing you up there, killer. Maybe Big E was having a bad day. Don't take it personal, it's too early. We'll see, I said. I've been down long enough to know when someone was about to test me. When it's played out so many times, you become familiar with the signs. I was thinking, here we go again. I always hear from my buddies that I have a certain look that makes guys want to test me. I was on the push-up station doing some sets with a guy named Gangsta. Just then, Big E and Ghost walked up, started small talk with Gangsta and asked to join in a couple of sets. Then the hostile talk began. I can't stand fucking chumps on this yard, Big E said, glancing at me. Watching him out the corner of my eyes, I did my set. I could tell it was directed at me. I hear you, dog, Gangsta said. Unaware, I was the target. But that's a part of doing time. A lot of dudes think they can hold their own or fight, Big E said. Chumps just wrestle and can't scrap. There are very few d dudes here that can fuck me up. Later, I found out from a few other faces that knew me from other yards and spread word that I knew some martial arts and I was a good fighter. These faces saw me before I ran into them. This is where the wrestling comment from Big E came from. What's up, Big E? I said. Nothing, he said, shaking his head, scowling. He turned to Gangster. You think you could take me? Unsure whether Big E was serious or not, Gangster laughed the question off. Ghost can't take me, Big E said. When he glanced at me, everyone became silent. I knew what was coming next, so I decided to beat him to the punch. Well, I guess that only leaves me, right? I can take you, I said calmly and with confidence. <laughs> I could tell by the look on his face he was surprised. Right then, I knew Big E wasn't used to being on the receiving end of being called out. I'd removed him from his comfort zone. Part of the battle was already won, I thought. Gangster and Ghost looked at each other curiously, aware, alert that the situation had escalated. They weren't sure whether the event would explode right there. Is this Vato fucking serious? Big E asked the question as if he were in shock. Hell yeah, I'm serious, I said firmly. All right then, I never turned down a challenge. What are we going to fight for? We're going to fight for bragging rights. General purposes, baby GP. I answered in a cold tone, my mind switching into battle mode. Where are we going to do this, he asked. Gangster chimed in, not in the cells. 
Roberts is working the control tower today, he watches everything. In the octagon, take it in there, Ghost said. Yeah, we'll do it in the octagon after wreck, Big E said, and walked away with Ghost. We call the handicap shower, shower one, the octagon. It was a blind spot the control tower officers couldn't see. It was 15 by 15 feet, designed to accommodate wheelchair-bound inmates. Population called it the octagon because everyone went in there to handle their problems with each other. It's anyone's guess how much blood was spilt in there, or rather mopped up. What the fuck was all that about? Gangster asked. Fuck that motherfucker, he's been eye-fucking me all wreck. Man, that shit just came out of nowhere. Hey, I'm going to walk a few laps. I don't want to burn up all my energy. Can you handle the details to get us out of ourselves to fight? I've got you covered, dog. I'm going to get at JJ. Gangster went to talk with JJ, the building barber. JJ's job gave him the privilege to let the guard know which cell he needed to open to let whoever's her he was cutting come out. He was one of the few guys you go to talk to if you need your cell door open for whatever reason. Wreck was over so I headed inside to lock down. I was in my cell when JJ came to my window. He already knew what was up. Hey homeboy, I heard gangster got at me. This is what we're gonna do. I'll pop your door. Go down and sit in the chair and I'll pretend to clean your hair up. Take your towel then pretend to hit the showers but hide in shower five. I'll get the octagon open and pop out big E. Give me a few minutes. When I say it's cool, come down and go in and handle your business. He'll be in there. I'll keep point to make sure no cops come. Keep point means keep lookout. If you hear me whistle, be cool because the cops are coming. I'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, I got it, I replied. Fights are dangerous in prison, especially in cells. Steel lockers, desks, beds with sharp edges you could trip and hit. You don't know whether the dude will pull out a piece of steel, a shank on you, or afterwards because he can't stand losing. Back in the days, you'd win some and lose some, but hold no grudges. These days, too much ego never lets anything die down. Even prison isn't immune from narcissism. If I was glad for one thing about the octagon, it was good to be fighting in an open space. I got ready in my own way, took my shirt off so I couldn't get grabbed by the shirt, have it pulled over my head or get blood on it, put my wreck shorts on, long enough to protect my legs, but short enough so as not to restrict my movement like trousers would, tied my shoelaces tight so my shoes had no possibility of falling through all the tussling, then drank a thick shot of coffee for the boost. Just then my door popped open. And I'm about to run out of video time on this one. I didn't realise it was this long. I've got another three and a half pages. So what I'm going to have to do is finish part one here. And then I will post part two of Warrior vs Big E quite soon after this. So you're going to hear what goes down in the octagon. Someone's going to be mopping blood up in the octagon. And I hope you never end up in prison. Having to deal with this, man, it's uh, stressful. All right, thanks for following my channel, subscribers. Subscribers jumping up really fast, really appreciate it. If you've got any comments, put them down below. Um, I'll be filming with Wildman next month. He's going to be doing videos like uh, how to make a prison beanie. He's going to show you. He's going to how to make uh, tattoo ink in prisons. He's going to. He's, we're going to do all this stuff live. We're going to buy all this stuff because um, he's loving all the comments and he's been replying to all your comments. So we appreciate you following and leaving comments. Cheers. Take care.